everyone and welcome back to this Wikipedia. This week we're going to be looking at repurposing an old LCD display panel. Uh, this one in particular is a monitor that I pulled from the trash. Um, but you could also use a LCD monitor from an old laptop. Um, and the reason you may want to do this, uh, obviously to save it from going into landfill, um, you might be a retro gamer and need something that you can hook up uh, analog RF video to. Uh, or even composite video. Um, obviously that may introduce a little bit of input lag. You may just want to be able to say that you made your own display using an old display that you pulled out of trash. Or you may want to make something portable that can run from 12 volts so you can take it in your, your car or your caravan or whatever. So let's have a look at what you'll need to do this. First of all, obviously you'll need a donor panel. Like I said, from trash or, or, or out of an old laptop and you'll need to get the model number from the back of the panel which we'll look at in a second. Uh, the other thing you'll need is an LCD controller board. Um, this one here is the uh, usually referred to as the V56 or V59 board. Uh, it's got analog RF input. There's a USB connector. I wouldn't imagine it's going to be able to play 4K video or anything like that but um, it can do basic video and pictures. There's a 3.5 mil audio out, 3.5 mil audio in, uh, stereo RCAs, composite video, HDMI in, VGA in, and obviously the power input here. Uh, so you'll need the controller board, which we'll look at the options for in a second. Uh, the other thing you'll need is an LVDS cable, which will vary depending on what display you're connecting it to. You may also need a power inverter board. Once again, this will depend on the display. Uh, and you'll also need a keyboard connector. Well, that's what they call these anyway, uh, which also has a little infrared sensor for the remote control. And the other option is just a little set of speakers. Um, if you've pulled the display out of a laptop, chances are you can salvage the speakers from the laptop as well. Um, so let's pull the back of the panel off and we'll have a look at what the model number is. And from there we can figure out what uh, parts we're gonna need. Uh, so with this particular one, it doesn't actually have any screws on the back, so it must be all just clipped together. As you can see, all it's got is a VGA input, so it's pretty useless for most things. Um, and the other thing is it doesn't have an IEC connector, so you can't just plug it straight in. It actually takes its own power connector, which I don't have because I just pulled this out of the trash. We've got a HM215WU1-500 uh, panel. One thing to note down here, is the power input for the LCD backlight. So we will need the inverter board for this particular display. Um, if you've got a smaller display that only seems to have this connector here or a similar sort of one without the other connector, um, then you should be able to get away without having to need the inverter board. Um, so let's just disconnect this. There's usually little tabs uh, around the connector that you just need to push in and that should slide out. Just remove that and pull out the power connector for the display. So this thing is is pretty much rubbish now. Like there's no use for it. I don't even know if it actually works. It's possible it doesn't, and that's why this monitor was thrown away. Or maybe just because it only had VGA and they didn't have a use for it. So we'll get rid of that. And now we're left with just the panel itself. Obviously with these things, once you've got them removed, uh, be careful not to flex them too much because uh, it's pretty easy to break an LED or LCD display. Um, one thing you can do, if you're not sure about the condition of the display, uh, you can shine a bright light through the panel and it, you'll pretty much be able to see if there's any uniformity issues or black blobs where the actual LCD panel is being cracked internally. Um, but this one looks pretty good apart from being dirty and dusty, which is to be expected. Um, so now we know that model number. Let's have a look online. Uh, 
you can start by just googling the model number from the back of the display usually you'll come up with a whole bunch of options uh, one of the good websites to check out is called panellook.com this will give you basically the specs of the display so it's a 1920 by 1080 uh, full HD display um, the main thing we're interested in here is the interface type uh, in this case it's a 30 pin LVDS connector uh, 2 channel 8 bit um, so that'll come in handy in a second uh, the next thing I'm going to do is pretty much just look on eBay and again we're going to look for that model number um, I won't include anything else in that search um, but be sure to check include description in the search options and what you should come up with is a whole bunch of um, results and what we're really looking for here to begin with is a full kit for this panel and you can usually see so you've got the controller board there's the inverter board and the keyboard so to control channel up down volume that kind of thing and again there's a few options so one of them only has HDMI, DVI and VGA inputs um, which is fine if that's all you need it for um, but given that it's only a few cents difference between the next option which is the one I've got uh, which is the V56 board um, that's only a couple of bucks more and then finally what I should have actually gone for is the 3663 board um, which has all of the same inputs that I've got here plus digital TV and also component input um, so the two main options this is the one that I picked up um, but it is a slightly different converter board on this one I bought everything uh, individually but you can as you can see you can usually get these things in a full kit that has everything you need to get going um, so you can see the board I've got lacks the component inputs and back in the search results for only a couple of bucks more you can get one with the component inputs which is usually called a 3663 board and yeah you can see that there's component inputs on the edge um, and also this can do analog RF and also digital RF um, so digital TV signals and analog TV um, so that's what I should have gone for but I didn't realize that this was an option until after I'd ordered the board that doesn't have it on there but anyway so you can get that in kit uh, it's gonna be about 50 bucks Australian 35 bucks US otherwise you can buy these components individually um, for example the 3663 board is uh, $26 Australian so it's about 20 bucks US the converter or boost board um, which is this guy here which is gonna supply power to the actual LED backlight um, yeah they're pretty cheap about seven bucks Australian so five bucks US thereabouts uh, the keyboard also pretty cheap two dollars sixty four and that comes with the keyboard and the IR receiver for the remote control and then finally depending on what display type you've got uh, the matching LVDS cable in this case uh, for this display it's a 30 pin 2 channel uh, 8 bit cable um, but as I said once you google your model number for your display uh, on panellook.com you'll be able to find out which interface type you've got and yeah just plugging that model number into eBay uh, including description should lead you on the right path uh, if you do get stuck uh, there is a good, good website uh, called LCD for hobby uh, which I'll put a link to down below uh, it's actually by uh, a Polish guy so his English isn't perfect but there is a wealth of information on here so you can check that out if you get stuck or if you want to see what your different options are finally you'll need a power supply now something that's uh, a DC power supply that's 12 volts 2 amps is probably going to cover most display sizes um, obviously the bigger the your display uh, 
the higher current is going to be needed. But um, uh, for example, I've got a 12 volt 1.2 amp, which is just enough um, to satisfy the, the demands for, uh, I think this is 21 inches. Um, but I have actually ordered the 2 amp power supply. So yeah, definitely look and try and get something that's at least 12 volts, 2 amps. Um, obviously, bigger displays are going to require more current, so you may have to go up to 3 or 4 amps. Um, but once again, that's 10 bucks Australian, so $7 US. And finally, you can also pick up a set of little speakers. Um, yeah, the ones I've got here I salvaged from an old laptop, so they'll do the job just fine. I wouldn't expect anything magical from you know these tiny little laptop speakers um, but yeah these boards do have an audio output so you can always hook that up to an external amplifier or powered speakers um, but yeah once again they're four dollars fifty Australian so yeah you know three dollars fifty US or something like that so expect to be paying about thirty to sixty bucks Australian depending on the display size and and what other options you need and yeah like I said a, a Putting your model number into eBay, including the description and the results, um, should definitely lead you down the right path. So that gives you an idea of components that you'll need. Let's hook it up and see how it works. So first of all, we've got the controller board um, and you'll see that there's usually a black connector up the top here, which, which matches up to the LVDS connector the, to go to the display um, and it is keyed so you can pretty much only put these connectors on one way. So we'll connect that and then the LVDS cable should fit in the other side of your display. If it doesn't then chances are you've picked up the wrong cable. Um, but they're usually only a few bucks anyway, so um, try again. Uh, and this, for this particular one, as I said, it needs the power inverter board for the actual backlights. Um, this one's a pretty much a universal board, so it's got different um, connectors depending on what your display requires. Uh, in this case, it's going right into that middle connector, and that's going to hook up to the backlight connector on the panel. Once again, these are keyed, so they should only go in one way. And then you'll have another cable which connects the controller board to the driver board. Uh, and you'll generally find the six pin connector on the controller board will be the one for the power inverter board. Like I said, if your panel doesn't have a separate um, connection for the backlight, you can skip this step. Finally, you'll need to collect up the, what they call the keyboard, um, which is usually a big long white connector on the controller board. And again, it's all keyed, so it'll only go in one way. And that's got your power buttons, channel up and down, volume up and down, menu, and the input selector button, um, which is all possible to control with the remote control as well. And lastly, if you want to add a pair of small speakers, you can do that too. Um, you'll find that there's actually, on this board, there's two four pin connectors. This one is a 12 volt external out, so you don't want to connect your speakers to that. Um, you actually want to use this one over here. You'll be able to tell the difference because on the back of the board it'll be printed with either speaker or it'll say left, left, right, right. Um, so it should be pretty easy to work out what to connect that to. The other connector says 12 volt, 12 volt, ground, ground. So yeah, definitely don't plug your speakers into that one. Okay, so everything's connected. Um, we'll tidy this up in a minute, but let's just test it out. Obviously connect to your 12 volt power. Okay, power on. 
down. And there we go, so we've got, we're currently on the analog tuner by the looks of it. Uh, you can see there's a little light on the LED here. Um, and we'll just try these. So that's powered off. Let's power it back on. And channel buttons aren't going to do anything because there's not any channels programmed, but you can see the volume up and down buttons work. There's our menu. And this one should be able to change between the input source. Um, oops. But you can also do that with the remote control, so it functions the same way, basically. So now that we've got that set up, um, obviously we've got a lot more inputs than just the VGA that we started with. So let's just try the analog input. Just use an old C64 for this. Right, so I've got the Commodore 64 hooked up by the analog RF output. And the connector's not very good. But looks like the audio is working if you can hear. Old school static. Love it. And there we go. So that works. Um, obviously, I already had this tuned into the right channel, but um, through the menu, it's pretty easy to get to. Um, manual tuning or auto tuning even and yeah you can just search and it will just go through the frequencies and stop when it finds a signal uh, in this case it's our Commodore 64 signal um, so yeah, it is quite nice to see this old-school ant race going on on a nice new LCD panel um, something nostalgic about that I think So yeah, there we have it. A retro computer hooked up to a modern LCD panel um, via analog RF. Um, and yeah, like I said, there's this composite video available, HDMI, VGA. Um, if I had bought the one that I should have, there would be comp component video as well. Um, but pretty much everything you'd ever want um, to be able to hook up to a, a recycled LCD display. So yeah, we've saved this panel from going into landfill and, you know, we've also built something um, which is always a good feeling. So this will find pride and place uh, down here. It's going to be a nice easy way to hook up any retro consoles that I have in order just to test them out. Like I said, if you've got something that's only got an RF output, um, you're pretty much stuck with any modern displays because they're not going to have an analog RF input. And yeah, there's, this can be also fairly portable as well. I mean, it can run directly off 12 volts, so a, a car battery or something could, because it could easily run this display. So looking through the menu, we've got the tuning for the analog input. Uh, obviously, if you picked up the 3663, you should also have options for digital uh, TV tuning. Um, you've got all your picture settings, so you can change contrast, brightness, aspect ratio, color temperature. It's even got um, MPEG noise reduction. There are sound mode options, so you can change bass, treble, balance, all that kind of thing. Uh, it's even got a sleep timer. Uh, you can set the OSD language and auto off time. You can even set the backlight brightness. Now, an odd thing about this is on this particular one, the backlight is set to 10, but that's actually the lowest level. So if I move it back to 9, 8, 7, it'll get brighter. Um, but that's actually going to draw more current from the power supply. And given that I'm using a power supply that can only just handle the lowest backlight, I won't pump that up all the way for now. Um, and yeah, you can also lock all the settings as well if you really wanted to. So yeah, that's about it for this week. We've taken an LCD display that was probably going to end up in landfill, uh, added some handy little input options to it, thrown a couple of speakers on board as well for good measure. And um, now we have something that can easily be hooked up to any retro console. And also 
a myriad of other devices. So it's a lot easier than trying to lug around a CRT TV. Um, maybe not quite as nostalgic as having a CRT TV, but um, if you're after nostalgia, you can pretty much just do a bit of this and there's your nostalgia right there. If you're using RF on your Commodore 64, seriously take a look at my previous video and make yourself a proper composite or S video cable because there are better options. So yeah, thanks for watching this Wikipedia. If you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe for more either really awesome or really shit house videos. Um, leave me a comment down below either way. And on that note, I'm out.